Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, let's put our knowledge of uh, marine factors and uh, fatigue stress concentration factor to use. The first problem we'll consider is this one. The coal drawn AISI 1040 steel bar as shown here is subjected to a, is subjected to a completely reversed axial load fluctuating between 28 kN in compression to 28 kN in tension. Estimate the fatigue factor of safety based on achieving an infinite life. If infinite life is not predicted, estimate the number of cycles to failure. So we need to first find out uh, if it has infinite life. And that means it will have a factor of safety more than one. If the factor of safety comes out to be less than one, then obviously there's no infinite life. And in that case, we'll estimate the number of cycles that this component is likely to last. Let's start with uh, the strength part. Because it is AISI 1040 steel uh, from table A20 at the back of the book. For AISI 1040 cold drawn, this cold drawn CD. Uh, we can read the values of uh, ultimate ultimate tensile strength is 590 MPa. Now, for this range, we know that SC prime is simply 0.5 SUT, which in this case will be uh, 295 megapascals. So this is the endurance limit, but this is SC prime. Now we have to apply the different factors, the modification factors using uh, and uh, recalling the marine equation. The surface factor, first of all, we'll leave with the surface factor. Now this surface factor is, if you recall from our previous lectures, and uh, the coefficients A and B, these are you can read them from table 6.2 of your textbook and uh, these are for cold drawn. These are A is 4.51 and B is equal to minus 2.265. Please verify these uh, from your uh, tables yourself. Now this means that Putting these values here, Ka is equal to 4.51, SUT is 590 from here and to the power minus 0 0.265. So this Ka, this turns out to be 0 0.83. Now we next move to the size factor. Now size factor, obviously this is not a case of bending, this is a case of axial. And if you uh, view your equation 621, then you will see that for axial loading, we don't use a size factor. Actually, we take Kb is equal to one. And what we do is we take the effect of axial loading in the loading factor. So for axial loading problems, simply you take the Kb is equal to one. So there's no need to worry about the size here. We now come to the loading factor. Now loading factor, axial loading, Kc is equal to 0.85. Again from the from your textbook. Now KD, KE, KF is equal to 1. There's, there's uh, no mention of temperature here, so it's 1. Reliability, no mention here, so it's 1. Miscellaneous factor, again, nothing that we should uh, consider, which is different from the uh, 
rotating beam test. So these are all one. Here there's a point to be considered that for if you take ke is equal to one, we are going to take it for as one, but then you should only expect a reliability of 50%. You know that the values reported for uh, uh, endurance limit, these are just for 50% reliability because you take uh, your, uh, you pass your curve uh, at an average value. If you want reliability, higher reliability, then obviously it's a, uh, you should take the value of ke less than one because we are taking it as one so you should have this in your mind that whatever value you get uh, you are going to have a reliability of 50 percent hence we talk about the factor of safety if there's a factor of safety involved then that takes care of this reliability issue so you should have this in mind when you take k is equal to one so now let's apply the marine equation S E is equal to 0 0.83, 0 0.85, and all the others are one. So you just put the value of S E prime to 95. I'm this equation is actually K A K B K C into S E prime. This is the equation we are talking about, and this turns out to be. 208.12 MPa. Now this is the marine equation. We have found the endurance limit. Now let's come to the factor of safety, either to the stress concentration factor. Now in this case, we'll uh, Because this is an axial loading case, we'll have to consult figure A151 at the back of your textbook. And in this case, if you want to read it off uh, the chart, then you need the value of D over W. And D over W is simply this diameter over the width so it, it is 6 over 25 it's given which is 0 0.24 and against 0 0.24 you read the value of kt and ma make sure that you are using the correct figure because the same plate with a hole it can be the same dimensions it could be subjected to bending and other kind of loading. So for each different kind of loading, you'll have a different KT, even for the same geometry. So you must make sure you are reading the correct case. So this uh, theoretical stress concentration factor or geometric stress concentration factor from the chart is this. Now from fi figure uh, 620 of your textbook again, you read the not sensitivity again this not sensitivity is a function of the material we know the material the ultimate tensile strength of the material and also the size of the discontinuity here the size discontinuity is a six millimeter radius so uh, diameter so the radius is three millimeter again three millimeter and the yield strength of this material you read the not sensitivity and it is nearly because you cannot again this one also you cannot very accurately read it but roughly you get this value now we have seen we have just discussed in the last lecture that we must in the case of ductile materials we must take the uh, subjected to fatigue loading obviously we must take the factor of safety uh, the stress concentration factor which is this kf fatigue stress concentration factor so which is this one and this is putting the values which is then 2.2 now we reduced or modified the endurance limit the strength by using the marine different factors uh, using the marine equation marine equation and here 
we will increase the stress like we discussed the stress in this case because it's an axial case it is simply p over a now this is 2.2 we are going to increase this we don't apply this stress concentration factor to reduce the strength but to increase the stress we discussed this point it's an important point especially for combined loading this is not a problem of combined loading but this approach will work always now this loading this is p is equal to 28000 newtons the area is width 25 minus 6 this is the diameter this is the diameter of the hole we are talking about the this remaining area we are talking about this point this has the stress so we're talking about this only this area so you subtract the value of the diameter multiplied by thickness of the plate which is 10 millimeter and this sigma is then 324.21 mp this is your stress surface now obviously we want to check whether there is infinite life or not so we'll compare this stress value to this endurance limit. Obviously, we can see that endurance limit is less than the stress applied. So we, just to complete the formality, we know that there's no infinite life here, but to complete the formality, this is the factor of safety. And which turns out to be 0.64 which is less than one less than one means means no infinite life we have dealt with the first part of the problem problem said estimate the fatigue factor of safety we have found out the fatigue factor of safety you can find this f means fatigue factor of safety based on achieving an infinite life. This is less than one, so there's no infinite life. It would have been infinite life if the factor turned out to be more than one. Now, if infinite life is not predicted, as is the case in this problem, estimate the number of cycles to failure. Now, we have to take care of the second part of the problem. Now, fatigue life. Now, we, now we'll be talking about fatigue life. What happens here is, if this is the situation first we are talking about this this was se and the, the stress we are subjecting the body to is somewhere around here so endurance limit we use the endurance limit to this point but now we are talking about how many cycles because the stress is higher than the endurance limit this is the stress 324 so what is the n at this point how many it won't last infinite number of cycles but it will fail before that but how many cycles that we need to find out so we need the expression for fatigue life now endurance limit won't help us now here so which is a power b this is a very familiar expression now a is f s u t square over s e and b here is minus one over the again very familiar expressions we have seen them earlier too now here there's something called f so from figure 618 against the ultimate tensile strength that we know 590 against this value we read the value of f from this figure in your textbook and this is again roughly equal to and this is good enough you don't need more accuracy than that. So putting in the values, if we take this and put the values back, then this turns out to be 0.865 into 590 square SE. We just calculated it. Similarly, this is one minus one over three log 
जीरो पॉइंट एट सिक्स फाइव इंटू फाइव नाइन्टी ओवर टू जीरो एट पॉइंट वन टू एंड इफ यू सॉल्व दीज यू गेट ए वन टू फाइव वन पॉइंट फोर एट मेगा पास्कल्स दिस एज यूनिट्स ऑफ मेगा पास्कल्स एंड पी विच इज डायमेंशन लेस इज दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ A and B. So now the expression, if you use the expression SF is equal to. Now we have to reverse this expression because we we are interested in the number of cycles. So let's take it to the left hand side. So if we take it to the left hand side, then N is equal for SF. Now this is the you're talking about this. So there's a convention that we write for for SF we write completely reverse stress the same thing same thing over a this goes to the denominator n so this is the expression that should give us the number of cycles that we have uh, we can expect this thing to last so put in the values this completely reverse stress that we are applying this is 324 more than obviously this endurance limit if it was less than the endurance limit there would have been no question of it Of uh, calculating n because it would have infinite life. A we just calculated one over minus zero point one two nine nine, and this n if you calculate this turns out to be thirty two seven nine and seven thirty two thousand seven hundred ninety two revolutions. So you have basically. This is the answer for your part B. Part A, no infinite life. Part B, if there is no infinite life, then obviously it should have some life less than ten to the power six. Because after ten to the power six, we have this uh, assumption, uh, which is quite reasonable in the case of steels, that it should last after that. So n should be less than ten to the power six, and this is now. If you want to increase this life, either you decrease the stress. Applied by increasing the area, this area and everything, or decreasing the load, whatever. Or you must then use some other material with a high endurance limit. So this is your. But if you are not going to change any of these things, then your component will last only these many cycles. So this is the end of question number one. Now let's move to. another application of the same and that application is slightly different It's the same concepts but here we will have some different variation from the last question the machine cantilever beam shown the machine cantilever beam this one now this the emphasis on machine because we are going to use the surface factor for machining the machine fact uh, uh, cantilever beam shown is subjected to non rotating bend bending now the last question we had axial fluctuating load here we have bending but of the non rotating type this is uh, this beam is welded the tensile strength of the material used is 710 mpa this is given to you 710 mpa is the tensile strength and uh, the load at the tip fluctuates between plus f and minus f like this using a factor of safety safety factor of 2 with respect to fatigue failure find the maximum possible value of f now we are basically going to find the value of f for which we have a factor of safety of 2 and value of f for infinite life and for a life of 10 to the power 5 so obviously for infinite life you will be able to put in some value of f For infinite, but for life of 10 is to our 5 cycle, you'll be able to put a larger value of f because you are reducing the number of cycles. So let's start with this. Again, we start with the strength part first. Sc prime. You don't need to see any table now because you are already the value of this uh, sut. So 0.5 into sut. That is 0.5 into Seven hundred and ten, which is three five fifty five 
MPA. Now we again have to apply the different factors. First of all, the surface surface finish factor or the surface factor, which you can read from uh, table six two. And uh, obviously the expression for that is a s u t b and uh, for machined the values a is 4.51 and b is equal to minus 0.265 these are very familiar because in the last problem we were dealing with the cold drawn and the values for both are the same now if you use these expressions then your ka turns out to be 4.51 and 7.10 minus 0 0.265 and this is 0 0.792 now size factor the second is the size factor that we need to consider now here is the case of non-rotating bending non-rotating bending so from table 6.3 you have to find the equivalent diameter because it's not rotating if it was rotating then all you needed to do was to just use the size factor by using the equation but now before that you have to first find the equivalent diameter of a bending of a, of a rotating type of bending situation so for, from table 6.3 it's very easy to see that for the for this relevant case you have this value 0.37 into d and the d happens to be the diameter of the non-rotating specimen and that is 11.84 millimeter now once you have this de now you can turn to your size factor equation and this kb is uh, nothing but 7.62 minus 0 0.107 and if you put in the value of the diameter then this is the value of kb it's important to find this many on many occasions one forgets to find this equivalent if you use the 32 diameter directly here it will be misleading it will be wrong so this step is important for <coughs> non-rotating types of uh, situations so this is your uh, <coughs> size factor kb now what about kc bending loading loading factor now, kc is equal to 1 by it's bending so there's no need to worry about this one Again, like the last question, KD, no temperature, KE, reliability is not mentioned, KF, no miscellaneous, so they are all one. Again, I'll stress this point that for K is equal to 1, you're talking at best about 50% reliability. So, which is not a good idea. But here in this question, because you are talking about factor of safety of 2 already here, so maybe 50% reliability with a factor of safety of 2 is not such a bad situation so but you are covering that here if you don't use a factor of safety here then your results whatever the force you come out come up with that will last infinite life or of life of 10 to 4 cycles it will only be applicable to 50 percent of the components you design which is very bad but here hence this factor of safety of two so now here we are just using these as one so i'll just <coughs> move on and apply the marine equation which is now we are in a position se is equal to 0.792 this is where i am 
Ka and then Kb.954 and Se prime is 355 MPa. So there's no, no difficulty here. And this Se then turns out to be 268 MPa. Now this is your Uh, situation where you have this SE for this situation because all the other factors are one. Now let's talk about uh, the pretty. Uh, let's talk about the uh, because first of all you you must be very clear about this. This this should have been enough information if we are only dealing with this part A. For infinitely because you have done dealt with the stress the strength part you would then compare the strength part with this stress situation and you will get whatever force is required for infinite life but we also need part b for a life of 10 is to 5 cycles so here endurance limit itself will not help us we need to have an expression for fatigue strength so let's when we talk about strength let's exhaust all the strength parameters Fatigue strength expression is again very familiar, nothing difficult about it. A again F S U T S E B minus 1 over 3 log of F S U T over S E. And uh, again we have this F here. So from figure 618, F turns out to be for this ultimate tensile strength of 710 we read it against this value and this is again 0.84 so putting in the values a 0.84 into 710 over 268 this is 1327.2 mp and b minus 1 over 3 log 0.84 into 710 over 268 and this is minus 0 0.1158 and therefore SF is 1327.2 and minus 0 0.1158 now there's one point to be made here when you use figure 6.18 uh, if in your if your book is SI edition you'll just read it directly because your uh, your uh, endurance limit value is in MPA but even if it's uh, not in SI units you'll find the, this chart figure 6.18 in K, KSI there's nothing to worry about you just convert it's very easy to convert KSI values to uh, MPA it's just a factor of seven actually 6.89 but you can use a factor of seven so there's no problem there so don't worry about this, these uh, units and if you have SI units then there's no problem at all now we have dealt, dealt with the strength part we know all about the strength of this part now let's talk about the stress what about stress the loading as you can see is bending so this force multiplied with this this the bending moment is maximum at the root very obvious so the maximum bending moment is simply 300 multiplied by f 300 is the moment of now sigma max because bending stress uh, is going to be to be relevant here which is KF again, KF, T factor of safety, M max C over I. Now this one is expression, simple expression for uh, this uh, bending stress. And now we need to again talk, talk about this KF. Now KF itself is no diff nothing difficult about this one plus Q, KT minus one. Now we have to find out the values of Q and kt 
So when it comes to KT, again from figure A159, again you must be very careful. The same loading, the same situation, the same radius R and the same diameter. It will give you different values if you are talking about axial loading or bending loading or torsion or whatever. So you make sure you read it off the correct chart which happens to be A15-9. Here D over D, there are two parameters here. D over D is basically this D over this D. This D is 32, this bigger D is because 2 plus 2, 4, 30, 32 plus 4 is 36. So this D over D is 36 over 32 which is 1.125 and the other is R over D. It also depends on this radius as compared to this. So R over D is 2 over 32. You have all the values. It's 0 0.0625. So against these two from this table, from this chart, KT is again roughly equal to 1.8. Now, Figure 620 for Q, again very familiar, Q against this ultimate tensile strength and the radius of 2 mm, talking about this, this radius, any radius for holes, it, the radius of the hole for this kind of a situation, you have again the same expression for R, which is, in, it's come, it turns out to be roughly 0.82 you cannot read it very accurately that's all right so now if we use these express these values for this in this expression the kf then becomes 1 plus 0.82 and 1.8 minus 1 which is 1.66 now you can verify for yourself that uh, this KT was 1.8 but KF is slightly less 1.66 why because of not sensitivity it's not one it's less than one for ductile materials it is always less than one. for tough material it is less than one so slightly less than that and this is the fact value we must use for fatigue situations now we come to the now we we know everything about this expression so if we put in the values here and uh, should be easy now all you need to do is make two comparisons so sigma max like we had already established was kf m max into c c is the radius over i c is the radius this is the neutral axis at the center so the radius will be half of 32 now, we can simplify this somewhat. Kf m max c over for circular section, the value of the second moment of area, moment of inertia is this one, and uh, this becomes this, and you can get 4 Kf m max over pi c cube now if uh, now you can use this expression too but since we are given diameter so let's convert this into diameter it doesn't matter it depends on how you like to do these things but if c is equal to d over 2 so radius is half of the diameter you can put the value this and further simplification 32 kf m max over pi d q this is sigma max so now we just need to make two comparisons that's all first of all for infinite life for infinite life we will be comparing the 
endurance limit so endurance limit with this stress but we will be using a factor of safety of 2 for part b for life of 10 is to the power 5 cycles then we will be comparing the same stress expression with the value of this is the value of sf for n is equal to 10 is to power 5 now so we will get two answers so let's do them one by one a for infinite life sigma max we compare this with endurance limit over 2 this is design factor 2 we are basically reducing the strength further because we are going to have a factor of safety of 2 basically we are taking half of the strength so putting in the values and just comparing the two 32 into kf we know 1.66 m max we know 300 f pi d we know 32 we have already converted this from c to d so it's easy now On the right hand side 268 over 2 this is the se is 268 and f turns out to be 865.6 newtons this is the value of f that we can apply for infinite life for this system with a factor of safety of 2 if you apply this much force 865.6 newton you can expect infinite life what about part b you are not aiming for infinite life now part b for n is equal to 10 raised to 5 cycles so what should you expect which should you be able to apply more load than this or less load than this obviously you can apply more load than this so here you are going to make the same comparison but now sigma max expression will be with be equated to the fatigue strength fatigue strength because we are talking about this first we were talking about this region after this is the same se but now we are talking about 10 is to power 5 this is 10 is to power 6 and onward is the same se but now we are talking about 10 is to power 5 so this sf is greater than se and where should we get this value of sf simple we have already done all the hard work so sf is equal to this 1327.2 n minus 0 0.1158 for n just put in the value of 10 is to a 5 the smaller the n the, the bigger the n you'll get less value of because there's minus here the smaller the n you need you basically designing for less life then you can afford to go higher in the stress region so minus 0 0.1158 and this is 349.9 and this is the value of sf now we make the same comparison that we did here here 32 into 1.66 into 300 f over pi 32 power 3 and here on the right hand side instead of 268 now we can afford to put 349.9 water so basically we are going higher so you should expect a value of f bigger than this one which turns out to be if you calculate this is the value of f now obviously if you're talking about less life you can apply a higher load which will turn out which will basically result in a higher stress so it makes sense now just food for thought for what do you think will happen if in this expression in this expression sf 
is equal to 1327.2 and minus 0 0.1158. What do you think if we put 10 raised to power 6 in this expression? What should we get? We should get value of SE because this expression was based on this region. It is true for all points in this region and one of those points is this one. The other one is this one. So if you put the value of this 10 to 6, you'll exactly get the value of SE which happens to be in this case 268 MPa. So we all have taken care of this second problem as well. Now we see another variety. We are doing basically different questions but actually uh, they are just different manifestations of the same kind of theory that we have discussed earlier. So let's finish this with this last question and with this you should be able to do all the questions that deal with completely reverse stresses and uh, whether they are axial or bending or whatever the case may be. So you should be able to do them. Now this last question as the uh, <coughs> wording says a solid square rod is cantilevered at one end the rod is 0.6 meter long so we're talking about this sort of a square rod solid square rod and this is cantilevered there is a ball here it is cantilevered and the length of this is 0.6 meters or 600 millimeters, the so same thing, but uh, uh, I like to work in newtons and millimeters, but it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Now, supports a completely reversing traverse load at the other end of two kilonewtons. Traverse load, two kilonewton. Now, this is your uh, uh, traversing, uh, traverse load, completely reversing, so it can, it is like this. The material is AISI, hot rolled. You know what to do with hot rolled and if the rod must support this load for 10 raised to the power 4 cycles with a design factor of 1.5 what dimension should the square cross section have now basically here we, sh we are talking about this is a real design problem we need to find out the dimensions B the first two questions were you could say they were an analysis problem but design is never separated from analysis so whenever you design something you again analyze it and then you keep on iterating so it doesn't matter but this is a pure design problem you need to find out the value of b so that for 10 raised to the power 4 cycles it has a design factor of 1.5 so it must reach the value of 10 raised to the power 4 cycles for this kind of loading so you need to find out the value of b what dimension should the square section have neglect any stress concentration at the fixed end here you are told you do need not worry about the stress concentration here but if uh, it is not said then you you'll be given some values of r here and then you can do like we did in the last question so here it is easier for, for us we just can ignore the stress concentration and uh, if you ignore stress concentration you need not worry about the not sensitivity either so let's start the problem again the procedure will be the same table from table a20 for aisi 1080 hot rolled you have s ultimate tensile equal to 770 mp it's a very familiar should be a very familiar process by now if we have this then se prime is simply 0.5 sut that is 0.5 into 770 is equal to 385 MPa. Now this is SE prime. We need to find out SE again. The factors. First of all, the surface factor. Surface finish factor. The surface surface factor. Now the again very familiar expression A S U T B. And for hot rolled, you can uh, again read the values of A and B. For hot rolled, they are very different from cold rolled or machine because those values are different this is completely different 57.7 is a 
and p is minus 0.718 please verify this uh, from your own textbooks from the relevant tables and if these are the values then ka is 57.7 sut is 770 minus 0 0.718 and this is 0 0.488 Look how much, how small this is. For a cold roller machine, it was in the, uh, point 0.8, in the region of point 0.8 to point 0.9. So this is what finished us. All rolled, obviously, you should expect this sort of deterioration of uh, the fatigue uh, strain. Now the next is uh, size factor. Now, here this is somewhat tricky in the sense that uh, the, the first part is obviously this is bending but this is not a circular section so it's a square section non-rotating the square section so what you need to do is you need to find equivalent diameter of a circular section or rotating circular section that will be equivalent to this situation now for that you can see the relevant table 6.3 i believe it is and the value comes out to be this and h by h and p we mean that this is h and this is p for our case this is a square section so h is equal to p h is equal to b so this is 0 0.808 b square under root b now the thing here is that uh, we cannot find this out de because we don't know b this is what we need to find out so what we do here is and this is a very typical design situation you you have an expression but you don't know what to put in that expression because this is what we need to find out in this problem in the first place so what you do is let's assume a value a reasonable value of kb so we, we we'll just def, we'll just delay this check later on. First of all, what we say is, k, let's take kb is equal to 0.85, which is a very reasonable value. And re remember to check at a later time when we know value of b. We need to check whether this assumption was reasonable or not. So just take kb is equal to 0.85. And this sort of thing happens a lot in design. Design is never a linear process. Now, even in such a simple problem, it's not a linear problem. So, in more complex problem, obviously, there's a lot of this sort of thing that happens. Kc, this is, I'm talking about loading factor. Kc is equal to 1, which is bending. Albeit non-rotating and square, but it is still bending. Again, Kd, Ke, Kf. One again, reliability 50%. You know what we're talking about, but again, factor of safety 1.5. This should help us, even if it's 50%. 1.5 factor of safety will mean that most of the components will pass this criterion. If it is not used, then 50% is not good. Now we move on to the application of the marine equation. Very simple, we are doing this for the third time today so it should be no problem so what we do is we need to find out se from se prime and for se this is 0.488 this is the surface factor ka and kb we have just assumed to be 0.85 and se prime in this case is 385 and this then becomes this now again this alone will not help us why because was it was it a question if it was a question of uh, infinite life then this would have enough been, been enough for us but we are talking about 10 is of four cycles so what we need to find out is the 
expression for fatigue strength and and once we have the expression for fatigue strength then like the previous question we can compare the stress parameter with the strength parameter the expression for sf fatigue strength which is again same old where a is equal to f s u t square over s e and p is equal to minus 1 over 3 log f s u t over s e f from figure 618 against the s u t value you can read it and it is 0.83 in this case so then a this a becomes 0.83 into s u t we know is 770 se se helps here obviously because before without se you cannot find this expression either so it has its utility but this alone cannot help us in this problem so this is 2557.6 b is equal to minus 1 over 3 log 0.83 into 770 over 159.7 7. and uh, this is minus 0.2007 so sf for us then becomes a and b so 2557.6 and minus 0.2007 now for 10 is for 4 cycles. We are designing it for 10 is for 4 cycles. So for 10 is for 4 cycles, SF becomes 2557.6, 10 is for 4 minus 0.2007, which is 402 MP, 402.75 MPA. Now this is the value of stress that is that corresponds to 10 is for 4 cycles of stress. Now, uh, uh, 10 is about 4 cycles of this application of this stress or in other words, this again, talk about 10 is about 4 cycles. So this is SF, this one. It is higher than SE because SE is corresponding to 10 is about 6. This is SE. So this is the value of, uh, and now we have dealt with the strength part. Now. The stress part again this is the bending situation so m max is equal to 600 into 2000 2000 into 600 and this is 1.2 into 10 raised to power 6 newton millimeter whatever units you choose they are all right as long as you are consistent you need not follow this Newton and millimeter system. Now Sigma max is M max. This is pretty much the same as the last question. The only difference being we are not using a fatigue, fatigue factor of a fatigue stress concentration factor, which we have been told we need not use here. So we are just in real life. We should use it when the, uh, the situation so arises 1.2 into 10 raised to power six into this is the uh, radius and this radius we don't know it actually b over 2 diameter over 2 i is again b b cube over 12 this is simply for a square section this is the case and sigma max then if you simplify this it becomes 7.2 into 10 raised to power 6 over b cube and b is in millimeters this is very important you may have a different expression different numbers but then your b will be maybe in meters or something now comparing strength to stress comparing strength to stress this is the strength thing the stress parameter this is the strength parameter but one thing you must be vary about and that is you must use this factor of safety which is basically 1.5 in this case so sigma max 7.2 into 10 raised to power 6 over 
b cube is equal to 402.75 over 1.5 and hence b from this b turns out to be 29.93 millimeter or 30 millimeters this is the b if you have this kind of size then you can expect with a factor of safety of 1.5 that your component will last 10 raised to the power 4 cycles now actually we have done what we need to do but there's one biz uh, business left and that is recall that uh, we had uh, said that kb because we couldn't we didn't know b so we couldn't find out the size factor so we took it as 8.85 which was basically an assumption now if we can if we are we check this assumption whether it was a reasonable reasonable assumption or not and that should then take care of this problem completely so finally checking for size factor now de as we just saw it is 0 0.808 0.808 b so d e was 0.808 b which is now we are in a position to know what b is b is 30 so this is 24.24 millimeter now we use the correction factor for size which was this and 24.27.62 minus 0 0.107 which is 0 0.88 now this was point this is point actually it should have been 0 0.88 but we didn't know it so we assume 0.85 so 0.85 was conservative a little not very far away from what what should have been but slightly different but on the conservative side so we need not worry about it we can accept that this is all right so if this is all right then the size of 30 millimeter is also all right but it could have been that this this situation this answer was bigger than this uh, then you should this could have been uh, for example if this point instead of 0.88 it was less than 0.85 it means we needed to uh, reduce the strength further than we did so in that case maybe we needed we would have needed one or two iterations we could go back use that factor of, use that kb and then do the sum and then find out again and uh, we would have converged in one or two iterations but in this case because it is close enough and all uh, even if it's slightly different than it is on the conservative side we accept that d 30 millimeter is our answer so that takes care of the application of the principles that we have discussed in the last two lectures.